briefly, I'd like to address some of the prior claims that, uh, and prior, several prior immediate claims, one being that uh, abortion is not an economic issue and that we should be focused on economic issues. And I also, you know, I think it's important to state that, um, that abortion is an economic issue. Forcing poor and working class people uh, to give birth um, against their will, against their consent, um, against their ability to provide for themselves or a child is a profound economic issue. And it's certainly a way to keep um, a workforce uh, basically conscripted uh, to large scale employers and to employers to be to work more uh, against their will, to take second and third jobs against their desire and their own autonomy. And so the idea that um, that abortion and access to abortion is somehow not a profound and central economic and class issue and class struggle um, is certainly something that I think a person who's never had to contend uh, with the ability to carry a child, um, you know, it, it belies that perspective. Um, and it's disappointing to see. Um, but secondly, I think another thing that I'd like uh, to address is that the same folks who tell, who tell us and told us that COVID, COVID's just a flu, that climate change isn't real, that January 6th was nothing but a tourist visit, are the same, are now trying to tell us that transgender people are not real. And um, I would say that their claim uh, is probably just as legitimate as all their others, which is to say, not very much at all. Um, but moving forward, uh, Dr. Kumar, um, are you able to tell me what methotrexate and what conditions that methotrexate is routinely prescribed for? Sure, methotrexate has a number of different uses. It can be used to treat ectopic pregnancies, atopic dermatitis, lupus, um, and there's several other conditions that it can be used for. Yeah, I believe it um, uh, can also be used to treat cancer, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, I believe you said rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. as well? Yes. And um, they can also be prescribed in the event of an abortion, correct? Right, it can be used for ectopic pregnancies. It has been used in the past for intrauterine pregnancies, even though that's rare now. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, what we see here is that this is one drug that has many different applications depending on uh, the condition, which is common for many other medications as well. High blood pressure can also treat other, um, you know, medications for high blood pressure can also treat other conditions as well. And so what we're seeing here is that um, many of these abortion, uh, these anti-abortion laws, these forced birth laws uh, are written by legislators that really have very little clue into uh, the nuances of um, medical care. In fact, Texas has designated methotrexate as an abortion inducing drug. And now those same people who have cancer, arthritis and lupus have to prove that they are not using those medications for abortion, which then of course delves into gross violation of privacy issues um, that create real conflicts for people. Is this something that uh, you are seeing, Dr. Kumar? Yes, yeah, certainly. I've heard from people in Texas who have been using methotrexate for uh, other medical conditions and they're not able to access it at the pharmacy. Um, some people have also gone to the pharmacy to get their medication and been asked about pregnancy tests or about um, if they're using any kind of contraception, which again is a violation of their privacy and shouldn't be asked. They've been getting these medications for some time. Thank you. And you know, I think um, I'd like to walk through a little bit of a thought experiment or, or even a scenario in the small amount of time that I have left. That I have left. Um, I, for example, you know, since Republicans are forcing this conversation in uncomfortable ways, then I will meet them to it. I have an IUD. I've had one for years. Um, now, IUDs, if, one, if an IUD fails and results in an ectopic pregnancy, ect um, which has about a 50% chance, I believe, of an ectopic pregnancy emerging uh, with an IUD, um, does that, would that mean that if I were hospitalized in these states, you would have to wait until I was in the process, potentially, of actively dying um, before you could effectively treat me and save my or anyone uh, in our position's life. 
So thank you for that question. I think this came up earlier around ectopic pregnancies. To date and to my knowledge, there are no laws that outlaw care for ectopic pregnancies. However, what we've seen in Texas, because these laws are written by politicians and sometimes don't make sense and are difficult to grapple with and understand by physicians who are practicing medicine, we have seen people denied access to that care and have actually seen somebody in Texas who left the state to get care for her ectopic pregnancies. So it's very possible. It depends on which healthcare provider you see, which clinic or hospital you may go to, because we're interpreting these laws in real time by physicians. And that's exactly the problem, the, the right? Gen, is that doctors the gentlelady's time are now has expired. To interpret law. That's good. Thank you.